Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we've got a news review here to discuss. We've got a couple of things to discuss, including a couple of signings, waiver updates, injury updates, and we've also got a couple of uh, trade rumors to discuss involving the Flames, Kings, Predators, Devils, and the Philadelphia Flyers. We'll go to all that coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Antenna Hockey Channel. As usual, before we begin this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. Thank you for all of your support. I would never been able to do with all of you guys, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment down in the comment section below discussing all those discussed in today's video. Now, as usual, I'm going to start today's video off by a couple of signings. We've had four signings over the past couple of days. They're mostly low-end signings, so we'll get to all those go over right now. First, Mason Shaw signed a one-year contract with the Minnesota Wild with an AAV of $775,000, and the deal will be for the remainder of this year. Now, this is a decent sign for the Minnesota Wild. Shaw wasn't uh, signed with the Minnesota Wild and was let go as UFA uh, in the offseason, so he didn't get any NHL opportunities. Uh, he's just gone into NHL action so far this year for the uh, Minnesota Wild. He was overcoming an injury. Uh, he did indeed do that. He so far has four goals and seven points in nine AHL games this year. Uh, he has, over the past couple of years, actually been a really good NHL slash AHL forward. Uh, two years ago, he got to three games of NHL action, but had 52 points in 62 AHL games. Last year, had a goal in two AHL games. So played the majority of the season actually in the NHL. His first really good stint at the NHL level, putting up seven goals and 17 points in 59 games. Well, due to the injury, the Wild didn't qualify him, so he was a free agent. No one signed him. Uh, he signed an AHL deal back with the Iowa Wild. And now after having seven points in nine AHL games, he's earned himself a contract back with the Minnesota Wild. So very good stuff there for Minnesota. Now, they have a pretty deep team, uh, but they, there's a possibility that if they do wind up following themselves in the outside looking in the wildcard race, they could move off a couple of guys like Maroon, Duhame, Maroon, Ruolt, a guy like Marcus Johansson being moved. So with that in mind, I think they could definitely use a bomb six forward like a Marison Shaw uh, signed to be a good call-up option. I wouldn't say he's guaranteed to get into the NHL action, but I there's saying there's a possibility that he could definitely get into some NHL action. So we're gonna have to wait and see exactly how that works out. But that's a really good sign in my opinion. He so far has seven points in eight nine NHL games this year, had a really good season last year in his first career NHL season. So I could definitely see Shaw be a really good fit there for the Minnesota Wild in their bottom six. So we'll have to wait and see exactly when he's able to come up. But that's a really good sign there for the Minnesota Wild to get Shaw locked up by the NHL contract for the rest of the season. So really good stuff there from Minnesota. Very good sign there. Then we saw New York Rangers sign forward Brandon Scout to a one-year contract with the AV of $775,000. They'll be for the rest of this year. Now, just like uh, Shaw, Scalen was playing in the AHL affiliate for the New York Rangers. It's actually been doing pretty good, putting up seven goals, 14 points in 44 games. Uh, he's on pace to break last year's point total at the AHL level. So uh, that's a really good sign there for Rangers. Now, the Rangers recently lost Blake Wheeler. Uh, they had sent Tyler Pillick down to the minors. Nick Benino was uh, terminating his contract. So the Rangers have lost a little bit of their depth. So the sign of a guy like Scalen probably won't get into any NHL action. They still have a lot of good NHLers ahead of him in the depth charts, but if they run into a little more injuries and they aren't able to get a new acquisition, which I do think they will eventually do before uh, those guys get back from injury, I do think there's a possibility Scanlon could get an NHL look. Uh, he hasn't had played in any NHL games throughout his career. He's an undrafted prospect who uh, was playing over in the NCAA, had some pretty good things, signed a two-year deal with the New York Rangers, uh, and then he wasn't brought back last year, but after some solid games so far this year in the AHL level, and with a low amount of depth that the Rangers have. Uh, they wound up uh, signing Scanlon. So a very good sign there. Like I said, low end signing. Probably only going to be a call up option if they run into some injuries. But still, at least it's a little bit more depth for Rangers and they have another guy who they could call upon if they ever run into some injuries. So very good stuff there for New York Rangers. Then we saw New Jersey Devils make another signing. As the Devils signed undrafted player Isaac Poulter, who's a, a goaltender, to a two-year contract with the AV of Andrew $13,000. So the deal will be for the rest of this year plus next year too. So this is a really good sign there for New Jersey Devils. Now Poulter doesn't have any NHL experience. Uh, he's been playing over in the AHL and the ECHL over the past couple of years. Uh, last year, split time between the Utica Comets and the AHL and the ECHL's Adriatic Thunder. Putting up decent numbers at 9 10 city percentage with the ECHL team, at 83 percentage with the Devils AHL affiliates. So far this year, he's played 23 games at the AHL level, uh, put up 2.68 goals against average and a 909 save percentage, which is pretty good given his first year at the AHL level. So the Devils got a little bit of depth here, so they are able to get a little bit more depth than that. Uh, given the fact they have Schmid, Dawes, uh, Vanacek, as well as a guy like Shalgren in their system, I don't expect Poulter to get any NHL. Uh, 
action unless they were riddled with injuries. Uh, but the Devils, they also have Kincaid who's playing over in uh, the Carolina Hurricanes, what used to be AHL affiliates. So uh, the Devils are really low with goalie prospects, but with them having Schmid and Vanacek and Dahls all up at the NHL level right now, they do need a couple of guys in the AHL, and he's done really well. So with him doing overly well and possibly needing a little bit more depth on the goaltending side, they do wind up signing him. So that's a really good sign there for Poulter, who is an undrafted prospect. And hopefully he's able to make the most of his opportunity and maybe get called up once or twice over the next little while. But that's a really good sign there for the New Jersey Devils to sign an AHL player to a two-year NHL contract. So very good stuff there for the Devils. And then lastly here, we saw National Predators make a signing as the Predators were able to sign Michael McCarron to a two-year contract extension with AV of $900,000 and they'll begin the start of next year. Now for McCarron, he's actually been a really good fit over the past couple of years with National Predators. Started out as a Montreal Canadiens draft prospect. Didn't really work out in Montreal. Went over to Nashville. He's been a really good bomb six forward in Nashville over the past couple of years. So far his tenure in Nashville in 131 games over the past four seasons at the NHL level. He's put up 31 points. So very good stuff there for McCarron. So far this year he's actually been pretty good. Not played at the NHL level the entirety of the season so far. Had seven goals and 13 points in 42 NHL games so far this year. He's been a decent bomb six forward. Been a healthy scratch a couple of times. But he's also been a really good bomb six forward at times too. So that's a really good sign there for the Predators. Not an overly huge sign, but he's a really good fourth line forward. Can be a spare forward at times too. He's a really good depth guy who can definitely work out really well and be a consistent spare slash fourth line forward for National Predators. So this is a really good sign there for the Predators to get extension there. And hopefully McCarron will make the best of this as he's going to be in Nashville for the next couple of seasons. So some really good signings there. New Jersey was able to sign Poulter, who's in a little bit of a goalie depth, to a two-year uh, ELC. Uh, the New York Rangers were able to sign back Brandon Scallon to a one-year contract. The Minnesota Wild will be able to sign Mason Shaw back on a one-year contract. So very good stuff there. And then Michael McCarron was able to sign a two-year extension with National Predators for the next couple of seasons. So some really good signings there from the past couple of days. Going over to a quick waiver update from the past couple of days. Now, as we talked about on Thursday, Rem Pitlick was on waivers for Chicago Blackhawks. I thought he would probably wind up clearing. I thought there might be a decent chance he wind up being claimed, given the fact he's a decent bomb six forward. He's not making an over amount of money. I thought that he was making a decent amount of money, but not a huge amount. I thought there would have been a chance he winds up being claimed, uh, but he didn't. He wound up clearing. So not overly surprised when Pitlick cleared. He was dealt by the Pittsburgh Penguins to Chicago Blackhawks for a depth pick, and earlier in the season was placed in waivers as well. So not overly surprised with the Hawks getting healthier. They needed a little bit more room on their roster to activate a guy like Connor Bedard uh, that wound up being the money in the place Pitlick on waivers, and he cleared. So that allows them another call-up option should they need it again. So interesting stuff there, but Pitlick's not going to go to the AHL for the Chicago Blackhawks, and he should be able to get a huge role there for the Blackhawks. Really good stuff there. And then we saw two players be placed in waivers on Thursday. Uh, first, it was Marcus Caliano Kelly with the uh, Vegas Golden Knights, who was placed on unconditional waivers for purpose of contract termination. And then Matthew Phillips, who signed a two-year deal or a one-year deal in Washington this offseason as UFA, wound up being placed on waivers by Washington Capitals. Uh, so Caliano Kelly is uh, a decent prospect there for Vegas Golden Knights. Wasn't getting very much of an AHL opportunity, so they mutually agreed to terminate his contract. Not overly surprised, but he did wind up clearing for Vegas Golden Knights, so he's now UFA. My guess would be he probably goes overseas to get some more uh, playing time elsewhere, so we'll have to wait and see on that. But Calvin Clay is now a free agent, now is no longer a member of the Vegas Golden Knights organization, so not too surprised there. It wasn't even much of an AHL opportunity, and he winds up uh, being terminated his contract, so interesting stuff there for Vegas. Meanwhile, Matthew Phillips was indeed claimed. Decent bomb six forward, the younger guy who can definitely play in a bomb six role, was claimed by Washington Capital rivals, the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, interesting claim there for the Penguins. They recently found out that Jake Gensel is going to be out due to an injury. Uh, they also placed Noel Chari, who's out right now due to injury on injury reserve. Jansen Harkins is out right now. So they do have a lot of injuries currently on that team right now. So they could definitely use a little bit more bomb six help. They have to call up a couple of their younger guys. And now they also acquire Matthew Phillips. So really good stuff there for Penguins. That's a fantastic pickup there for uh, Pittsburgh to get Phillips off from Washington. And I think he should be a fantastic addition there for the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins as a bomb six addition. So really good stuff there. Uh, Pillock winds up clearing waivers. Not too surprised there. I thought I'd probably have cleared waivers. Decent bomb six forward, but making, I think, over a million dollars in cap. So he winds up clearing. He's going to be a call-up option in the future there for the Blackhawks. Uh, Callan O'Kelly was uh, terminated his contract after being placed in unconditional waivers and clearing. So once again, not too surprised there. Decent 
prospect there for the Golden Knights. Wasn't getting much AHL opportunity. My expectations would be he probably winds up going overseas. And lastly, with the Pittsburgh Penguins, they wind up playing Matthew Phillips for the Washington Capitals. Phillips was a decent bomb 6 4. I thought there was probably a, a chance he wound up claiming. I wasn't also going to overrule the fact that he probably would have been cleared. But he's a really good bomb 6 4. He can work well as like a fourth line forward for a team. And for a Pittsburgh Penguins team, he's dealing with a couple of injuries right now. That's a really good pickup there for Pittsburgh. So, really interesting stuff there for the Penguins. As they're able to claim Phillips from the Washington Capitals. Then we saw a couple of injury updates here from the past couple of days. So, first, uh, on Thursday, we had a lot of injury updates. Jake Gensel's upper body injury has been updated to four weeks. So, Elliot Freeman was talking about this and said that even though he's injured, this probably won't affect the Gensel trade, uh, even though he is going to be out until past the deadline. So, interesting stuff there, but Gensel's going to be out for next little while. Veli Husso has a lower body injury and is out for a week to week period of time. So, really bad blow there for the Detroit Red Wings. Blake Wheeler has a lower body injury. He left uh, the game on Thursday. I'm not exactly sure who they're playing, Montreal. Uh, he left the game against Montreal uh, due to a lower body injury. It's going to be out month to month. He's going to be out for the rest of the regular season. He's already been ruled out for regular season and doubtful to return to the playoffs. So that's a horrible blow for Rangers. Wheeler hasn't had the best of seasons, but he's been a really good middle 6 4 for the Rangers. So interesting stuff there for New York. Uh, then we also have Tanner Janos, undisclosed injuries out day to day. Uh, Liam O'Brien has an upper body injury. So does Connor Ingram. Both are out for a day to day period of time. It's really bad injury updates there for the Coyotes. But then Bjorn for was clear to play for Vegas, uh, Tenorti for the Blackhawks, Shaw for the Minnesota Wild, uh, Bedard for the Chicago Blackhawks, and Victor Arvidsson for the LA Kings, and all of those guys were able to get back into game action, so very good stuff there. Then we saw uh, Luke Phillip, like we said, uh, have an undisclosed injury out for an period of time, was placed back in injury reserve by the Blackhawks. The coach Joshua has an upper right injury and is out for a week to week period of time, so that's a horrible blow there for the Canucks. Nils Lundqvist has an upper right injury and is out for an unknown period of time for the Dallas Stars. Well, Nick Paul is going to be game time decision for today's game with undisclosed injury, so interesting stuff there. But Okapeka Lukanu and Dan Vladar have both been cleared to play and should get back in the game action in the not too distant future, so interesting stuff there. And then we saw Aaron Ekblad have a lower body injury and he's out day to day for Florida Panthers. So some interesting updates there on the injury front. Good to see guys like Lukanu get back, Vladar get back, Arvidsson for sure, Bedard as well uh, get back in the game action, but still really bad to see who shall be out for a week to week period of time. Uh, Wheeler be out doubtful for the playoffs, uh, Gens will be out for the next four weeks, and and Dakota Josh will be out for a week, week period of time. And hopefully those guys are not out for an overly long period of time and they'll be able to get back uh, in a reasonably amount of time. So interesting stuff there, but lots of injury updates over the past couple of days. And lastly, we're going over to a couple of trade rumors from the past couple of days. Now we're going to start today's video off by discussing a couple of interesting things from Scott Lawn with the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, Elliot Freeman does think Lawn will get dealt. Uh, it's very likely he does. Uh, he's making $3 million for this year plus two more seasons. Uh, he's a really good third line center. He can play wing as well. He's a very good versatile player. There's a lot of teams out there including the Rangers, Bruins, and Avalanche amongst others who are looking for some center help right now. Long could be a really good addition for those teams. It's like a solid third line center who can not only be helping this year but for the future too. Uh, there's a really good chance the Flyers do end up moving him now. It'll be interesting to see exactly what they uh, would want for him. I know I've seen first round pick be floated out there a lot. I'm not exactly sure if he will command a first round pick. It might be closer to like a second round prospect. But I do think Lon has a very like a chance to get moved. Now to a couple of guys, so Elliot Freeman and Jeff Merrick were mentioning on the 30 Thoughts podcast yesterday uh, was the New York Rangers and the Buffalo Sabres. Now for the Rangers I've seen a couple of other people link Lon to the New York Rangers, not just Elliot Freeman. Uh, he's a, a really good fit there for the New York Rangers. He could be uh, the Rangers have a really good one-two punch in Trocek and Zibanejad right now, so adding Lon as like a solid third-line center who can go up in the lineup if there's injuries would be a fantastic uh, pickup there for the Rangers. Now I'm not exactly sure where they would be willing to give up. I'll probably say like a second-round pick, maybe one of their uh, decent prospects. Would be my guess would they would be willing to give up. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens, but the Rangers could definitely be a team in there for Scott Lawn, as they really do need some center help. Buffalo is a little bit more of an interesting one. Jeff Merrick mentioned that they need some more help on the fishery side of things on that team. Uh, they definitely have a lot of guys who are on expiring deals like Olofsson, Gergensen, Zapozo, who could wind up leaving after this year, who are more veteran type players. They could definitely use a veteran type player like Lawton in a younger locker room with like the Buffalo Sabres have. So I'm not overly opposed to seeing that that could possibly work too. Elliot Freeman did mention a guy like Peyton Krebs is a guy that the Philadelphia Flyers could wind up targeting. Krebs is a decent bomb 6 4 right now, has like third line potentially second line potential. Hasn't really worked out overly well in Buffalo ever since being acquired in the Jack Eichel trade. So I do wonder if the Sabres and Flash could hook up on a Lawton deal. So it'll be interesting to see but those are a couple of good names that have been linked to Scott Lawton. I could definitely see Rangers have some interest. I could definitely see him go hard after a guy like Lawton who can definitely help not only for this year but for two more seasons at $3 million. That's a decent cap but not overly 
incredibly expensive. I think he'll be a fantastic fit there for New York Rangers as like a three-line center, at least for this year. And then when Hill gets back, hopefully next year, they can move him to a wing and have another solid uh, top nine forward. So that'll be interesting stuff there for the Rangers. As for the Sabres, I could definitely see why they would want Lawn. Now they have a ton of decent centers, so Lawn could be a solid top nine winger. But I could definitely see Lawn fitting really well as like a middle six forward in Buffalo. And I could definitely see them be willing to part with a couple of pieces if it was able to get them a solid veteran leader as like a middle six forward. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens there. But I could definitely see Lawton go down to the Buffalo Sabres or the New York Rangers. I could definitely see it being a possibility. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens there. Uh, but apparently Buffalo and New York could be a couple of teams. So that's some interest in Alex Scott Lawton. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Going over to Calgary Flames, uh, Kevin Weeks put out a tweet uh, a couple of days ago saying that the Flames have moved uh, Zadorov, they've moved Lindholm, they're getting interest in Hanif and Tanev. But those are not the only defensemen that could potentially be moved in Hanif and Tanev as the Flames are getting interest on defenseman Rasmus Anderson. Now, I do think there's a possibility Anderson could get dealt. I don't think it'll be a deadline move just given the fact that they're already planning on moving Hannafin and Tanev and they need some defensemen to play for this team for the rest of this year. So if they were to trade Anderson to Anderson, I don't see it being a deadline move. Uh, but I could see the Flames move Anderson. Uh, don't get me wrong. I do think it's a possibility. Now, Anderson signed for this year plus two more seasons. Uh, I think it was a $4.5 million cap hit. Now, if the Flames are going to go through a quick one to two year rebuild or retool or whatever you want to call it, they're going to move all these players who are pending UFA deals. If they can't sign guys like Manji Pani, Sharangovich, and Kuzmenko by next year's trade deadline, I can definitely see those guys get moved too. So I could definitely see the Flames move a couple pieces. If they have the intentions to the year after to try and make the playoffs, Rasmus Anderson's entering the final year of his deal. Do they really want to have him and potentially let him walk as a free agent if they can't sign him? So I can definitely see why there's be some teams interested in acquiring a guy like Anderson. He's a really good top four defenseman. Could definitely even be a top pair defenseman. I uh, could see a lot of teams interested in him. And I could see if Flames get like a first round pick and a really good prospect in return for him. Potentially as well, a really good roster player too. So the Flames could get a haul for Rasmus Anderson, but with them trading Hanif and Tanev, most likely before a deadline, I don't see Anderson being moved at this point in time. But I could see it possibly be an offseason move, and I do think there's a very likely possibility that we could see Rasmus Anderson be moved by Calgary Flames. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens for Calgary, but this could be a really good pickup there for a couple of teams if they are able to pay the price that the Flames are willing to pay, ask for. Uh, it doesn't sound like they're shopping Anderson, but it does sound like they could potentially be listening to him. And I do think it could be an interesting situation to watch out for. But I do think we'll have to wait and see if uh, Anderson gets moved by Calgary before trade deadline. Like I said, I'll probably say it's unlikely given the fact they're moving Hannafin and Tanov already. But I do think with Anderson only having two years left after this year and the Flames probably going for a quick one to two year retool, I do think it's a very likely possibility you could see at the very least in the offseason or potentially an extra trade deadline, we could see Rasmus Anderson be moved. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, that's definitely a potential possibility for Calgary Flames to move another defenseman. And that's another name we're going to have to watch out for. And last year with this uh, UC Soros, LA Kings, and UG Devils. Now first was the LA Kings, LA Freeman was talking about this on the 32 Thoughts podcast, and he was saying that the LA Kings still have not looked overly good. Uh, they got thrashed by the Buffalo Sabres before getting a huge win over the UG Devils. They've won three or four uh, since just before the All-Star break, so they're doing a lot better, but they're still not where they need to be. Their goaltending is still not where they need to be. Riddick's not done overly well. Uh, he was really good going into the Buffalo game and they got lit up. Talbot is not doing overly well either this year, so uh, he had a really good start to the season, but has really drifted off ever since. The Kings need some goaltending help, and Elliot Freeman does think that there's a very likely possibility the Kings will make a big goaltender move before the trade deadline. Now, uh, Jeff Merrick mentioned a guy like Ushi Saros. I think that's a very likely possibility. We heard last year that they could have been the team that uh, approached Nashville in exchange for a UC Saros trade package, because uh, you know there was a lot of reports last year that the Kings had some interest in Saros. Uh, I could definitely see the Kings acquire him, they have a really good forward group, a pretty good defense, of course. If you add a Saros level goaltender to the LA Kings, they're going to be a, a lethal team in the playoffs. And even though they're a wildcard team right now, I think there's a very likely chance they could make some damage in the playoffs, uh, even if they were a wildcard team. But there are a couple of other guys that could see the LA Kings that have some interest in, uh, John Gibson being one of them. I've seen Gibson be linked to LA for a little bit of time as well. He's in California. He won't have to move very far. He wants to go to a cup contender. Uh, the Ducks have been open to possibly moving him as long as they have the right trade package. Uh, on top of that, maybe they go after a guy like Jacob Marshall, although I think that's a little bit less likely. Uh, but I do think that guys like Gibson as well as uh, Saros could be really good moves there for the LA Kings. Maybe Jake Allen if they just want to try and upgrade the goaltending as best as they can. If they can't move the assets to get guys like those two, but I could definitely see them have the assets to pull off a guy like Gibson or a 
Soros trade, it's very potentially likely. Uh, like I said, they, they could definitely move their first round pick if they are confident they can go deep this year in the playoffs. They can move a guy like Turcotte, Madden, Thomas, and the four group. They have a lot of young, good prospects. Kalia has been rumored to be wanting a fresh start somewhere. We could definitely see Kalia be moved in a potential trade to upgrade the goaltending. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens. But interesting stuff there was we could see LA make a major move in that. Same thing with New Jersey Devils. On the inside training video on TSN, uh, Pierre LeBron was talking about the New Jersey Devils saying how they were definitely in on Markstrom. They haven't ruled out the possibility that they could still acquire him and they could still have some talk with the Calgary Flames. But on top of that, he says the New Jersey Devils have been checking in on Saros, on Gibson, on Allen. He says the Devils really want a legit starter who can definitely help this team backstop it back to the playoffs. So I definitely think the Devils could definitely, if they were to able to get a starting level goaltender, this seems going to be scary to face in the playoffs and could definitely make the playoffs. So I do think this is going to be a possible situation to watch out for. We know that they really want Markstrom. It's not a guarantee ruled out the fact that they could not acquire him. And if they don't acquire him right now, maybe they go for a short-term option and try and acquire him again in the offseason. This team is really good and they could definitely use a little bit more insurance for the future and nets. I think in the future, Schmid and Dawes could definitely have a shot at being this team's starter. But for now, those two are not the starter. They're not going to backstop this team for a playoff run. So getting a guy like Markstrom or Gibson or Saros or Allen who could be a starter for this year's playoff run and potentially for the next few years and then eventually have those guys be really good uh, starters. I think that's probably the most likely scenario, but we're going to have to wait and see. So Devils do have some interest in adding a goaltender, whether it's Gibson, Saros, uh, Allen, potentially Markstrom still. It's definitely going to be interesting to see, but according to Pierre Lebrun, the Devils are checking in on a lot of goaltenders and they could definitely be trying to add a couple of pieces. And they do have a couple of decent uh, prospects they can move, like Nolan foot, uh, Daniel Masuel, uh, Villain, Holtz could be a guy that could potentially move, so we'll have to wait and see on the Devils. And lastly here was Yuchi Saros. Uh, they Predators got thrashed by Dallas Stars on Thursday. They were absolutely obliterated. Uh, Saros and Lankanen did not look overly well. Uh, Elliot Freeman does think that it does seem like as much as we were at the beginning of the season looking like Saros was not going to get moved, there's a potentiality here that this could wind up getting done. Now, Saros has this year plus next year at a $5 million cap hit. Could definitely backstop a playoff team to a couple of deep playoff runs. So I definitely think there's a very good chance that teams like LA, uh, potentially Edmonton maybe, uh, New Jersey, uh, Carolina could all have interest in a guy like UC Saros. So I could definitely see a lot of teams have interest. He says that he thinks Jersey is definitely poking around there. He's already linked Carolina there. They was linking LA on the 32 Thoughts podcast. He definitely thinks there's a very likely chance the Saros trade could wind up getting done. Now, it would have to be a massive haul for National Predators. He's selling 32 Thoughts podcast that this team needs forward help. They really do, and they don't have a ton of forward talent. So he says that there are two ways you can do it. Uh, get forward help. Either one, you hope that you are able to tank and win a draft lottery spot, which is a potential way to do it, or you could try and trade a really good player, try and get some more forward help, and one of those players that they could move will be a guy like UC Saros. Now, like we said, David Pagnola thinks that the asking price is four assets, including two first round picks, a really quality offensive level prospect, as well as another asset. So if that would be the case, it'll be a really hard trade package to pull off. But the Predators have not looked overly good. They're four points out of a playoff power now. They're falling a little bit as of late. Uh, they've allowed St. Louis to not only catch up to them, but pass them in the standings. So it's not overly great news there. Uh, Seattle's now tied with them in the uh, points. So they're falling a little bit right now in the standings. They've lost four or five since the uh, All-Star break. They're not looking overly good. And I think there's a very lucky chance the Predators will not only sell, but they could sell big on a guy like UC Saros. So we'll have to wait and see on Saros, but according to uh, Elliot Freeman, it does sound like it's as likely as it's ever been to possibly see a uh, Saros trade. I'll have to see exactly what happens with Saros, but interesting stuff there as it does sound like Saros could potentially be moved by a National Predators. So definitely going to be interesting to see. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on all of this down in the comment section below. What do you think about all of this? Does Saros get moved? Is the Predators able to get what they want for Saros in a trade package? And if so, what do you think the return could be and where do you think Saros goes? Definitely have to get your thoughts on that. Do the Devils get their upgrade net? Is it Saros, Markstrom, Gibson, Allen, someone else? Definitely have to get your thoughts on that. Who do you think the Devils could try and target? And who, what do you think they would have to give up in a return? Do the Kings try and make a goal saving move? Could they go after a guy like Saros or Gibson? Do you think there's very likely possible they could do one of those things? And if so, what do you think they would have to part with in order to get one of those two guys? Definitely have to get your thoughts on that. Razius Anderson, does he get moved by Calgary Flames before true deadline? It sounds like there's definitely some teams who have interest in a guy like Anderson. I could see him potentially be moved, but I think with Anafin and Tanev both being moved, most likely uh, before a deadline, I think it's most likely that Anderson doesn't get moved, so we'll have to 
have to wait and stay on that. But does Anderson get moved in the next couple of years by Calgary Flames? On top of that, what do you think about Lawton? Does he get moved by Flyers? And if so, could the Rangers or Sabres potentially be landing spots for Lawton uh, if he was to be dealt? Definitely have to get your thoughts on that. Plus, what do you think about the injury updates, waiver updates, and signings over the past couple of days? Definitely have to get your thoughts on all that down in the comment section below. That's all I'm going to talk about for today. If you like this video, and if you really like it, remember to subscribe down below. Thank you for all your support. I've never been able to do without you guys. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below discussing all those discussed in today's video. I also do a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that. So if you check that out, I'll leave a link down in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for next video. See you guys soon.